Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the University of Utah's uh, Google Plus Chat Hangout today. Um, this is the first time we've done this type of an event, so we're really excited to have um, some folks signed up to join us, and we encourage you to type your questions in the chat box, and we will do our best to answer those. And I believe we had some chat, some questions that came out. Um, well, let's first introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Matteo Remsberg, and I am one of the associate directors in the Office of Admissions here. Pablo, you want to go next? My name is Pablo Martinez, and I'm an admissions counselor at the Office of Admissions here at the University of Utah. Hi, my name is Kayleen Yamada. I'm a student ambassador for the Office of Admissions, and I'm also a freshman. So. And my name's Weston. I'm also a freshman. I'm a student ambassador here at the University of Utah. Um, yeah. Okay, so again, as you have questions, feel free to type them in the um, chat box for the, the Hangout event. So, Weston and Kevin, why don't you begin by telling us a little bit about why you were interested in the University of Utah and the University of Utah to come to school? Do you want to go first, Kaylee? All, right, All right, so, so the, the reason, reason why, why I came, came to the University, University of Utah, Utah is because, because I, I found all the amazing opportunities here. Um, they had both programs. Um, for me, I'm kind of a weird major, so I like. So I'm going to be a business administration major and also a chemistry major. So it gave me the opportunity to do both those things at the same time. So. And I am also kind of a weird major. I'm an anthropology major, but I'm also a pre-med student. So. Um, that was one of the major deciding factors for me on going to school is what um, university would have the best program for me. And being a student, I looked at the new curriculum and us having our own medical school here, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Like, there's so many research opportunities and different academic opportunities that it was just What's your favorite thing about the University of Utah? Probably my favorite thing about the University of Utah is um, the community surrounding the university. So all of my friends and my professors and being able to walk down campus and see all fr friendly faces and um, getting to learn all the other students better. Yeah, one of my favorite things about the University of Utah is just how close I've become with the university, um, not just, you know, only working here, but also getting to know my professors and other classmates. It's been fantastic. You know, you see people in other classes that show up, or you see people that, you know, live in the residence halls down the hall from me that are also in my class, um, and you'll see them in downtown Salt Lake sometimes, so definitely the community is by far one of my favorite things. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Got it. So the first question that we're getting is how diverse is your campus? Uh, the University of Utah is probably the most one of the most diverse schools here in the state of Utah. Uh, we have, you know individuals and students coming from all over the world. I myself went to school at the U here, and um, I met people from Australia, England, also, also our ethnic minorities are a huge group on campus, and uh, they drive our student clubs on campus, as well as activities. Uh, there's a lot of movement. Yeah. I'll kind of go off what Pablo just said. Um, I'm from in-state. I'm from down in Utah County, so I chose to come up to Salt Lake for schooling, and 
um, I wanted to get out just because there would be so much diversity up in Salt Lake, and I've really found that to be true. Um, in a lot of my classes, all of us have different perspectives on life and the topics that we're discussing, and um, even my roommates, we're all from different places, like one's from California, um, I have one from South Korea, and one from Saudi Arabia, so I've gotten to learn a lot through them, and yeah, there's so much diversity, I think it's, like, it's impossible to get bored here because everyone's so different, and I think that's great. Okay, so the next question is, do you know by chance what the out-of-state acceptance rate is? Basically, just tell them that generally over our acceptance, application to acceptance rate is about 85%. I don't know what the specifics are, but it's 80%. So overall, overall uh, acceptance, uh, acceptance rate at the university is about 85%. Uh, what the specifics are for out of state students, I don't know exactly. Uh, but I can tell you that you know, out of everybody that applies every year, 85% of the students get in. Perhaps um, the student ambassadors, if you can talk about, about you know getting involved on campus and what um, what has helped you so far in terms of uh, leadership skills and perhaps getting a job on campus. Okay, so I'll talk about a few things that I'm involved with on campus. Um, so I'm actually part of the Greek system, so that's all the fraternities and sororities. And so that's actually an amazing opportunity um, to gain leadership experience, as well as also a ton of connections, um, not just within like my own house, but with on Greek Row and within campus too. So it's a really great opportunity. Um, there are also tons and tons of different kinds of clubs. Um, for me, since I'm a business major, I am part of Pi Beta Lambda. So that's a business club where we um, c get to compete with lots of other universities and focus on our business skills. Um, I know that Weston's pretty involved too, so... Yeah, one of the major things I'm involved with is ASUU, or the Associated Students of the University of Utah, and that's our student government here on campus. Um, I was involved in student government during high school, and I definitely wanted to continue that once I got here. Um, there's a bunch of different boards that you can be a part of. Um, I was a part of the Community Service Board, Rock the U Board, which does like cancer awareness and fundraising, as well as the um, Campus Events Board. That was a lot of fun to be a part of if you guys um, have ever come on campus to see a concert. We just had the grand kerfuffle over the weekend where we brought a wall nation in and students got in for free. Um, that was way awesome. Um, but I'm also a part of the freshman leadership. You know, one of the opportunities during or in ASUU, um, it's part of the freshman council and I've gotten to meet a lot of my close friends through um, the freshman council group and we do a lot of fun activities. Um, it's pretty impossible not to get involved here. Um, our next question is, how much does the honors college dorm living cost for the students, and is it worth it? Um, those rates are actually, you can see those online if you just go to housing.utah.edu and select, um, you know, the cost, it'll pop up and say, um, it'll pr like bring up a little PDF and say um, all the rates and stuff. But um, I live on campus, and Kayleen does as well. Um, mm -hmm. Kayleen actually lives in the honors um, residence halls, so if she wants to talk about that. Yeah, so the honors residence halls are actually really awesome. Um, I got the chance to live with them second semester, and it's been a great opportunity, not because um, you also have your own kitchen, so that's a plus, that so you can cook cook your own food, but there's also the, um, the Peterson Heritage Center super close by, too, so that you can eat there if you want to. 
Yeah, and I would definitely recommend on campus. I mean, both Kayleen and I are from in-state, so it is possible for us to commute to school if we wanted, but I definitely have loved my experience here living on campus and I'd recommend it to anyone who's wondering about living on campus I'd say go for it because you get to meet a lot of cool people um, a lot of the people on my floor have been in some of my classes too so that's been great um, we have another question um, what is your favorite daily thing to do um, at the University of Utah um, it really depends on the day for me but I'd say if we were just doing a general thing I would say eating on campus I'm like always hungry but um, there's tons of places to eat trust me you will not go hungry here um, and you know there's the food court there's the dining hall of an upper campus we have lots of restaurants scattered throughout the building so I'd say just like eating and hanging out with my friends that way has been um, one of my favorite things to do yeah I was gonna say along with like hanging out with my friends and things like that I found that the library has been one of my favorite places ever just to like meet other people like get to know all my friends like meet up and do homework assignments together and just hang out there too so that's one of my favorite da daily places I guess that I do here at the University of Utah so something else I like to do every once in a while is um, after classes and work is over um, I like to take tracks down to downtown Salt Lake um, we're super close to downtown Salt Lake we're like 10 15 minutes away if everyone if anyone's from out of state um, but yeah tracks will take you right up in, um, in downtown Salt Lake and there's tons of things to do you know there's like City Creek there's um, which is our shopping mall here in downtown Salt Lake. There's Energy Solutions Arena, so like the Jazz, and um, I guess they have like monster truck rallies there, I guess, sometimes. And there's also a ton of different concert venues. Like I saw Imagine Dragons, um, their sold out concert like three weeks ago, and that was amazing to do. So I think just exploring um, all that Salt Lake has to offer is one of my favorite things to do as well. Okay, there's a question about um, if we defer our admission, are we then bound to the U? Um, when you, in order to defer your admission, you do need to pay your um, $150 enrollment deposit, but um, you are not committed to the University of Utah. You can still um, decide to change your mind. Basically what a deferment does is that if you've been admitted to the University of Utah and you need to take a, a, some time off due to humanitarian, church, or military service, um, you don't, it makes it so you don't have to reapply for admission later on. But you can still, uh, when you come back um, from whatever service you're doing and you decide not to come to the university, you are not required to, to attend. It's totally up to you. Um, another question, do you know by any chance what the out-of-state acceptance rate is? Okay, so we talked a little bit about that where we, we're not sure what the actual um, specifics are for in-state versus out-of-state, but we don't have any sort of admissions quotas um, for in-state or out-of-state. Uh, right now, our general um, application to admissions is about 85 percent of those students that apply are admitted to the university. Okay, so we have another question. Um, what is the average ACT score of an accepted student and how much does it affect acceptance? Um, if some of you have already applied, you know that the University of Utah switched to a holistic admissions process, which means that instead of just your ACT score or SAT score and your GPA, there's also portions of our application that reflect um, other areas that you may be involved in because we understand that you are more than just, you know, what those two scores may tell us. Um, so there's portions of our application for you to talk about um, your coursework. You know, did you push yourself with your AP or I IB or honors classes? Um, did you do community service or did you work a full or part-time job? So although um, the ACT and GPA are very important to get in, we do consider um, that you're going through way more than just those um, two scores. Does that, hope that answers your question. And to follow up with Weston's uh, response on the ACT acceptance, and holistic admissions itself, you know, we're, we're also looking into community service 
there's another question that um, kind of talks about how fundamental community service is in terms of being admitted to the university. Um, for holistic admissions, you know, we definitely want to see uh, if you have been involved uh, in your school, in your community, at church, perhaps even at home, right? Um, so doing community service definitely helps. Uh, I think it develops your uh, leadership skills and can help you get into the university. Um, once you apply to the university, you'll see that there will be questions about, you know, what type of activities do you do outside of um, your school? Um, how many hours do you do community service and so on? So everything definitely helps. Uh, so make sure you put it on your application. So there's a question that says, when do you have to choose a major? Um, I believe it is they, you know, I've already like chosen one. I chose my last semester, but I know that the um, academic counselors try to help you find a major um, by the end of your second year. So you can actually, or so you can like um, graduate um, within four years and <coughs> potentially know what you're going to do after college. So I believe they kind of, you have to choose by the end of your second year. Okay, we have a question from Madison asking if we super score the ACT. And Madison, we do not super score the ACT. And for those of you that may not know what that means, um, it's basically we use the, your composite score from a single setting. We do not take your highest subject area scores from multiple settings and combine them into a new raw ACT score. So we do not super score the ACT. OK, so we just got another question in. And it says, what kind of undergraduate research projects are available? Um, we actually have an awesome program called UROP that actually stands for Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. Um, they have amazing different projects. It's not just for, for like the hard sciences, so like chemistry and biology and things like that. Um, they have ones, amazing ones for like um, humanities. There's even one where the where the physics department and the dance department um, teamed up together. So they actually hooked up like electrodes to all the dancers' body, and then they figured out the physics behind their movement. And they also then took that and made a new music piece with it to go with the dancers' movement. So we have amazing opportunities like that. Um, another part of the UROP program, they actually help you fund your research project, um, so you'll have that opportunity as well. Yeah, getting involved in research is pretty easy here on campus. You just um, you can head over to the UROP website and see what research projects they have going on, or just talk to people that you've um, gotten to know. Maybe one of your professors knows what's or if they have research. Um, I actually got a research opportunity for the summer through one of the librarians. I was working with them on a research or working with them on a research project, and they let me or gave me the contact information for some clinical research going on um, this summer. So I'm gonna be hopping on just after my freshman year, so that's exciting. Um, we have a question from um, Arun. Are there enough on-campus jobs at the U so that international students who do not have received any funding don't have to fight over them? Um, so there are a ton of jobs on campus, and I would definitely recommend, you know, if you think you can handle working on campus while going to school, um, do it. Um, there are tons of jobs available. You'll just want to head over to the Career Services website, and there's even a little link on utah.edu if you search um, for the on-campus jobs. And yeah, I would just say apply for them. I love working on campus. Um, it's really great because I schedule around our class schedule, so um, you never have to choose between going to work or class. Um, and they've been really great about working with us um, this school year. Okay, we have a question from, um, is it Eichler? I, I apologize if I'm um, slaughtering your name. But the question is, how long does the residency appeal process take? Um, it really kind of depends on the time of year and when we get your documentation and have a complete application file. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you want to contact the Office of Admissions directly, we can um, take, we can contact the residency area and find out what the status of your application is. Um, but again, without knowing some of the more specifics about 
um, when you apply it and things like that, it's it's difficult for us to say how long that a process will actually take. Then Michael right. asked a question about what makes the U unique that you can't find in any other university. Um, Weston or Kayleen, do you yeah. want to start? Yeah. I get, I'll start. Um, the U has, you know, we're located in such a great location. We have downtown Salt Lake, 10, 15 minutes away, and we have, like, the mountains right in our backyard. Um, they're right behind the residence halls here. Um, I think that's something unique that, you know, a lot of schools can't say that you can go see, a, like, a jazz game and then go, like, ski or snowboard, like, within a few minutes. So um, that's unique. And just all the different experiences here. Um, I looked at a lot of other schools, and I you know, was looking at their programs and stuff, and the U was um, by far the best choice for me. I would say, you know, whatever school you're looking at, make sure that you're going there um, for the right reasons, you know, make sure that um, you can create whatever experience you want. And I've really found that to be true here. Like, within my first six weeks, I was involved with the ambassador program, um, with some of the pre-med clubs here, with um, the student government, and I don't think I could have gotten um, any of those opportunities if I went elsewhere. Just like I mentioned earlier, I got a research position for the summer, and I would not have gotten that research position if I um, went elsewhere. Kimmy, do you want to talk about? Yeah. Here? So the one thing that I mostly thought about when I when I saw that question is the atmosphere of the University of Utah. Weston already talked about like our atmosphere as far as like downtown Salt Lake City and having the mountains. Um, but also just the students themselves and like just walking around on campus and feeling like the difference of like the student life and um, kind of being here on campus and then um, kind of becoming your own student here at the University of Utah. So, Okay, we have another question from Haley um, or Hallie, sorry. Um, what sorts of social events are there over the weekends? Um, there's actually a ton of stuff to do on the weekends. Um, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because there's always something going on, especially up at the residence halls. They have um, the Resident Hall Association, or RHA, and they plan um, multiple events per week. So some weekends it might only have one, but some weekends they have events Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, this past weekend they had a relaxation night since finals week is coming up, and um, they had a movie going on. Um, you could sign up for a free massage, and they had a lot of comfort food there, so that was fun. Um, and then they have major events like the Grand Kerfuffle, which is our spring concert. We just had AWOL Nation. Um, I was the front. I was in the front row of that concert. My hearing was a little shot for a few days, but it was awesome, and I love that experience. So there's tons of stuff to do here on the weekends. Um, you will not get bored. Um, it looks like there's another question uh, about the game design program and how great it is. Uh, and it's true. It's really, really amazing. We actually are second in the nation right now. And guess what's number one? MIT. Okay, so that can hopefully tell you about uh, how you know, great our program is. The professors are amazing. I, I was able to see the lab where uh, you would design your video games and it's truly amazing. If you like video games like myself, I'm a video game junkie, uh, this is the right program for you. Not just that, but uh, there's a lot of job placements right after uh, you graduate here in Salt Lake. I have friends that are currently working in Disney uh, who have a central here in Salt Lake City and they're uh, designing video games. And Also EA Sports is another company that is uh, actually placed in Salt Lake and they come and recruit our students for their companies. We have a question from Erica. Um, how flexible are the semesters? Um, I've heard that you can come in halfway through a semester. Let's say if you were um, doing an internship or taking a vacation, is that true? Um, as far as I know, you cannot enter in halfway through a semester. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mateo or Pablo. Is that still true? Well, we, we do have, um, in some terms, like summer semester, there is a first and a second term. Um, as well as the full length term. So it is possible to come in. Um, generally, I think most people will start, if they come in mid-semester, they do that during summer semester versus during the academic year. Um, the classes are much more limited in terms of what's available uh, first and second term. But technically it is possible. We would want to make sure that you're working with one of our academic advisors to make sure that you'd be able to register for the classes that you really need to get in order to move forward towards graduation. All right, so we have a next question from Cord. 
Um, so he is actually interested in speech and debate and also acting. And so he asks, what can the University of Utah provide, offer me with that both appeal to my interest at the same time providing me with an opportunity in life for a good job? And so um, as far as that, I think that it's really easy to take in both kind of your passion and what you want to do as a career. Um, not only just like with getting involved with a club, like with all your interests and passions, um, but it can also be super easy to tie in um, what, what you like, like to do with what you want to do with your career. So for me, like business was one of those things that I just, just loved all throughout high school. Um, all of my business classes were great, and so that's how I tied it into my business major, and I got involved with all the business clubs. So, so it looks like there's a question about, uh, and I'll read it out. It says, if I'm uh, Boise State and want to transfer to the University of Utah to study pre-med, does a WAMI program apply to me? Unfortunately, the WAMI program is only good for Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho, so it does not apply to the university. But I would still recommend coming here for all the pre-med stuff. I mean, being a pre-med student, I've gotten to work um, with the different teachers, professors, and advisors, and they've been awesome. Um, they've hooked me up with a lot of, you know, different conferences or contacts. Um, one of um, my pre-med advisor actually hooked me up with a bunch of different um, physicians that I could um, shadow and you know work with throughout my pre-med process here at the university um, medical complex and we have seven soon to be eight hospitals so um, if you're looking to go into anything health related definitely consider the University of Utah okay so we have another question it says does the U of U or do you have to be a music major or minor in order to participate in the university music groups and you don't have to be in a major at all. Um, if you want to actually like take classes there are ones that are specifically for um, non-majors and so you can still like be a part of the plays or do the musical or be a part of the choirs. Okay we've had um, looks like several questions that deal with different types of credit coming in to the U as well as some different scholarships. So Madison asks about uh, dual credits transferring to the U from high school. Uh, we had um, Julianne ask about whether or not the U accepts the Regent or Century scholarships. And then um, we had uh, Julianne also ask about uh, whether or not the U accepts AP and concurrent enrollment credit. So in terms of, of various types of credit that the university will accept that you take during high school, we will accept um, AP and um, International Baccalaureate or IB credit uh, depending on the scores that you get on the, the final test for each course. Uh, we, we also do accept uh, concurrent enrollment or dual enrollment credit um, provided that the credit is coming from a regionally accredited institution and it's a 100 or 1000 level and above. Um, so if you're here in Utah, uh, state law requires us to transfer in any credit that is given by any of the other state institutions, again, as long as it's a 1,000 level or above. Um, so yes, we do transfer in a variety of different credit. Now with regards to your question, Julianne, about the Regents or the Century Scholarships, yes, we work with both scholarships, and so I encourage you to, to work um, to complete those as needed. Uh, for any other people that are working on the Regents Scholarship, you'll want to make sure that you attend orientation in June so that you can meet the deadline for showing your fall enrollment to complete the requirements for the Regents Scholarship. Okay, we have a question from Colin who's asking, how far is the campus away from Park City and the other major ski resorts? Um, the U is located about 30, 40-ish minutes away from seven different ski resorts. And a great thing is when you come here, you get a cool little student ID that's like this big, and it acts as a free transportation pass to all UTA or the Utah Transit Authority. So that gets you free access to Front Runner, um, Tracks, which is our light rail system here in um, Salt Lake Valley, as well as all the buses. And they do have some buses that run straight from campus to um, the base of the mountain and then from there it's just a small fee to get to the um, specific resorts with their shuttles so we are really close 
All right, so we have another question. It says, does the U offer online courses? And yes, they do. Um, I actually have a friend, or my roommate is actually taking an online course, and she really likes it because it's flexible with her school schedule that she's already taking classes here. So yes, they are offered. So we've got a question here from um, Andrew that asks, when is the best time to start signing up for classes and planning a major, and how should this be done? Um, Kayleen, you want to respond to this one? Yeah, for sure. Um, so as far as like setting up your class schedules, um, when you come in as a freshman, you're actually going to get a ton of help at orientation. Um, so be sure to sign up for that and attend. And so there will be academic advisors on hand right there to help you out. Um, once you're a student, so for me, me um, I was setting up my fall schedule, schedule just the other, just the other day. day. And, and so, so I actually went in and talked to like, like my business advisor and my chemistry advisor and they helped me figure out what I need, what classes I needed to take. Um, you could also just look around by yourself um, because it's really easy with our student information systems that you can just look up exactly which classes you'll need to take for your major. Okay, we have another question. Um, what about the University of Utah has surprised you? Um, coming to college was kind of a scary thing for me. I went to a pretty big high school and that was fine, but um, coming to a campus of like 32,000 kind of scared me and I was worried that I was just going to be, you know, a number. I was just going to be what my student ID told me um, I was. But I was really surprised of how, you know, hands-on and how caring all the um, faculty is here. Um, I've gotten a lot of help and mentoring through all my professors and, um, you know, multiple of my professors have written me tons of letters of recommendation and so that was something that really was surprising to me was like how much they care and how much they want us to succeed and that's something that I've been you know really grateful for applying for scholarships and um, other opportunities um, I have all these people behind me backing me up and wanting me to succeed in life so um, yeah um, okay. okay Kayleen you can take the next one Okay, all right. So our next question is, what kind of advice would you give to incoming freshmen? My biggest piece of advice would be to get involved, for sure. Um, get involved, like find a club that you really like, find some people that you really like to hang out with as well. Um, that would be my biggest piece of advice. Come in and get involved. Like if you're living on campus, get to know your roommates, get to know the people on your floor. Um, even in like your general classes, like whoever you're sitting next to, say like, hey, what's up? My name's Kaylee, you know? That's what you want to do. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, there was, you know, a question about getting involved in extracurricular activities, especially um, in music, theater, and sports. Um, the University of Utah does have a fantastic intramural sports organization. They do intramural soccer, um, football, they even have intramural water polo. So um, you could even start your Olympic career here at the University of Utah if you really wanted. Um, but yeah, I would, you know, kind of backpack on what Kayleen said. My best advice to incoming freshmen is to just put yourself out there, um, opportunity and friends and everything is out there for you here at the University of Utah. You just need to go ahead and um, take, take all the opportunities that you can and I'd say get involved or um, you're not going to have um, as good of an experience as you would have. Okay, we are getting close to our ending time for this uh, first Google Plus. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll take two more questions um, and then we'll kind of wrap up. So the next question that we're going to respond to is one regarding transferring um, and transferring in with an associate's degree and how might that uh, impact uh, graduation from the University of Utah. And so basically there are a couple different ways to transfer to the University of Utah. One, um, once you have 30 transferable semester hours, you can apply as a transfer student. Um, the second way is to apply once you have received your Associate of Arts or Associate of Science degree. Um, so a couple different options. Um, if you transfer in with an associate's degree, one of the benefits of that is that we will basically waive the, the large majority of your general education requirements because you will have fulfilled those through your associate's degree. 
Um, whereas if you come in with less than an associate's degree, we're going to transfer in each of your classes kind of one by one, looking at them individually. So there are definitely benefits in terms of being able to get through um, your degree a little bit sooner perhaps, but again that also depends on the degree that you're studying. The advice I would give to transfer students is to make sure that um, if you know your ultimate goal is to transfer to the University of Utah, make sure that you are working not only with your academic advisors from the school that you're going to start out at, but also work with the University of Utah academic advisors to make sure that you're maximizing your time and taking classes at your first institution that will actually fulfill uh, requirements here at the U. Some of our departments really do prefer that their core requirements for the major are taking at the, at the University of Utah, so you'll want to make sure that you're, you are talking with your department specifically. I know that engineering and some of the sciences and even some of the art classes, um, the preference is that you take your core major requirements at the University of Utah, so you'll want to check with those departments specifically. And then I think let's go ahead and add, and end kind of on this last one because um, this is a big question that we get asked a lot uh, regarding class size in terms of what is your general class size. Uh, a lot of people worry that they're going to be taking you know classes with like 500 students for their entry level courses. Um, Kayleen and Weston, can you talk a little bit about your first your experience with? Um, kind of large classes here at the university and answer the question about what our average class size is. Okay, so I'll start out first. Um, my, with my first year classes, I did have to take um, just like my basic calculus one. That was my largest class um, and that was about 150 students. Um, it was very different from what I learned in high school. However, it was actually very easy to adjust to, I found. Um, like, if I just went to the lectures, it was still, I was still able to ask the professor questions, email him if I couldn't talk to him in class. Um, but there's also, like, for my chemistry class, which is also about the same size, um, the TAs are also there to help as well, um, which they are the teacher's assistants, if I don't know the acronym. Um, but they're also there during discussions, and they also do extra study hours, so there's definitely um, places, resources that you can still get the same one-on-one -on -one help. Yeah, and um, kind of just my experience with the class sizes here, um, my first ever college class was my intro to biology class, and it was like 200 students, and I was like scared out of my mind, but there was so many TAs. I think our class alone had like 40 TAs, um, plus our professor um, who would help us, and they held library hours every day from like 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and even more um, right before the um, tests and exams came around. Um, and so they were really great. But I'd also, um, I've also had a lot of small classes. So um, if you guys haven't already looked into it, I would look into the Honors College as well as the LEAP program. Um, both of those can be found um, through Google or our university website. Um, and those are a great way to get your um, class sizes down. Both LEAP and Honors are capped at about 30 students. Um, I, both Kayleen and I actually have been involved in both programs and I would definitely recommend getting involved with both Honors and LEAP if you have the chance. Um, but even a smaller class like my writing class this semester only has 11 people in it including the professor. So there's tons of ways to get any class size that you want. Okay, and with that, um, again, we appreciate you uh, joining us on our introductory uh, endeavor into uh, the Google Hangouts. Uh, if you have feedback on how we can improve, we would very much love to have you respond uh, back in the event chat section. Um, and then, again, you're feel free to ask additional questions. We will be responding to everyone that asks questions that we did not respond to live. Um, and again, thank you, and if there's anything else that we can do for you, please feel free to contact the Office of Admissions. Um, good luck and good night.